Let's get back to considering making a platform out of wood in our measurement setup. And let's consider how the EMP will interact with the wood structure. For example, here, we'll consider an electromagnetic wave propagating through wood. Let's choose a propagation direction and orientation for our plane wave so that we can come up with an expression for the electric field in the wood. Then we can study the behavior of the electric field as the wave propagates through the wood. I just randomly chose the middle of the screen here for the origin of our Cartesian coordinate system. Let's consider a plane electromagnetic pro wa wave propagating to the right, so in the positive z direction. So that will also be uh, the gamma hat direction. Let's also say that the electric field is x-polarized, meaning that the electric field only has a component oriented in the x direction. So we'd have E would be in the x direction. Now if this wave was propagating in air, we would write the electric field E, I'll write it up here, as a function of z and t, since it's propagating in the z direction, it only changes in the z direction, is equal to x hat E x naught, that's the amplitude of the x component of the electric field, cosine omega t minus kz. The x in the subscript denotes the orientation of the electric field. The zero, the o here in the subscript, means that it is the amplitude of the electric field at the origin. So at z equals zero corresponds with this position. Of course, in free space, the amplitude doesn't change with position. So E x naught, this whole term, would be the amplitude of the electric field at any spatial position as well. If we converted this expression to the frequency domain, we would get E z vector phasor is x hat E x naught E to the minus j kz, where the propagation constant is k equals 2 pi over lambda. But we have wood material here instead of air, so we have to consider the electrical parameters for wood, which we'll say for our frequency range epsilon r is 2, and sigma is 1 e to the minus 15 Siemens per meter. This means the permittivity for the wood will be complex since we have a sigma term here. Remember the sigma over omega epsilon ratio that we called the loss tangent, and we used to help us to determine whether the conduction current or the displacement current, or neither, dominates. Now that the per permittivity may be complex, we should specify that the denominator here in this expression that we introduced last time is only the real part of the permittivity. So we could write this as sigma over omega L epsilon prime. And also that this ratio is equivalent to epsilon double prime over epsilon prime. In other words, the loss tangent more generally compares the lossy reaction of the electric field in a material to the lossless reaction of the electric field in the same material. This means that when the loss tangent is less than 0.01, then the displacement current dominates. And we call the material a low loss dielectric. So low loss dielectric. On the other hand, if this term is greater than, say, 100, then the conduction current dominates, and we call the material a good conductor. So then, is wood a low-loss dielectric or a good conductor? Well, we came up with a really small value for the loss tangent, on the order of 1 e to the minus 12 and 1 e to the minus 14 last time. So we can say here that it's a low loss dielectric and 
the displacement current dominates, which we already determined. So getting back to our electric field expression, if epsilon is complex, it will make k complex. Remember for wood, we were given a conductivity value. So epsilon is complex, which means k is complex in the expression on the previous slide since k is equal to omega square root of mu epsilon. So this means we should plug in epsilon is epsilon prime minus j epsilon double prime into the jk expression in the exponent of the electric field. So we have epsilon is epsilon prime minus j epsilon double prime and we should plug this into our vector phasor expression x hat e x naught e to the minus j k z. So we should be plugging this in um, not directly in right here, but uh, when we evaluate that k. If we plug in the complex uh, expression for epsilon to jk, we will get what's written here, where we plugged in now epsilon prime minus j epsilon double prime. And we can define this, so we're going to uh, define this as being equal to gamma, and we're going to set the real part as equal to alpha, and the imaginary part is equal to beta. So this is why in electromagnetics we use K for uh, lossless materials and uh, we use beta and alpha for lossy materials. Even though the K and the beta really represent the same thing, this is the reason why we use K for lossless materials and beta for lossy materials. All right, so if we were to use this expression and solve for alpha and beta, we would get what's shown here. I'm not going to go into the details of that. Taking all that into account, a more general form for the electric field phasor is for our wood vector phasor Z is x hat e x naught. Now I'm instead of that k, I'm going to put in e to the minus alpha z and e to the minus j beta z. And if we want to convert this to the time domain, we would take the real part of that whole expression. Uh, but also multiply times e to the j omega t, as we did for transmission lines, and we would get x hat and um, we get e x naught, e to the minus alpha z, and cosine omega t minus beta z. Let's look at the form of this expression. If we are at uh, z equals zero, which we said is right here, how does the amplitude of the electric field change as we go deeper into the wood? So as z increases, does the amplitude stay constant or does it change with z?